Hey, what's happening? I'm Miles Kennedy, and you're watching Heavy Consequence on Consequence of Sound. What's going on? It's Ann Erickson with Heavy Consequence, and I'm very happy to be here with the legendary Miles Kennedy. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for thanks for having me. Of course. Thanks for being here. And well, first of all, you have so many different projects. I mean, obviously the new record was Slash, and then you do your solo stuff in Ultra Bridge. So how do you do it? Oh, good question. Uh, I've cloned myself. There's there are two of me, three of me now. Um, no, I, I look. I, I I guess I just uh, I love I love making music, you know. And I think that I think for me, um, it's something I don't take for granted. So when I have the opportunity to to make a record with 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 folks, I you know I just I'll take it. Let's 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 get this done and hopefully make people happy in the process. Yeah, no good answer. And congrats, of course, on the new record with Flash 4, which is a great album. I've heard the whole thing, and it's just an awesome rock record. I love it. Thank you very, very much. We, we appreciate that. So I read that you actually came down with COVID while you were recording and singing on the record. What was yeah. that like? It had to be crazy. Yeah, it was, it was a bit of a challenge um, initially. Yeah, we were, you know, we followed all the protocols, and everybody tested before we went in, and everybody seemed fine, and we started making the record and recording the basics and <clears throat> a few days in, I was just like, yeah, something just doesn't quite feel right. And I thought, cause we were in Nashville and normally I, I made a record in Nashville years ago with, with Alter Bridge. We made the second Alter Bridge record, Blackbird record in Nashville around the same time. And I remember my allergies were brutal. So I thought, Oh, it's, it's, it's my allergies, you know? And, and then by about day, I don't know, day five, I was like, yeah, we should probably just get somebody in here and just double check. I, maybe I have a bug or something. And uh, yeah. So he was like, you know, congratulations. Um, you're, you're going, you're going back to the band house. So, so yeah, it was, uh, it was definitely challenging, uh, especially as a singer, just because it, yeah, it made it kind of challenging to sing there towards the end. And, uh, but I did the best I could and, and somehow we, we managed to get it all, all finished up. Right. I can't imagine because COVID it hit your lungs so much. And so as a singer, that had to be, you know, an extra hurdle to get over. Yeah. Yeah. And in fact, you, for me, it's like, I can hear it on, it, it didn't really start to really take hold. Um, so like I said, till about four days in or something, that's when I started to notice something was going on with my, with my respiratory system. And, um, but on the first single on the river's rising, I, every time I hear it, I'm like, oh, I can hear how congested I am. And since like another full of rage, another, you know, like, I can just hear how congested I am. But Hey, you know, it's part of the, it's, I think in some ways it's part of the story of the record and, and the fact that the vocal was captured that way, kind of, um, you know, it'll always, I guess it'll always remind me, oh yeah, that's right. You know, you had to contend with that whole, whole element. Right. It's like a snapshot in history for the record. That's, that it is. That it, that it is. Absolutely. So actually that lead track, The River is Rising, it's one of my favorites off the set. So tell me a little about the inspiration behind it and the story behind it. Yeah, that's, um, that, song, that, that was one of my, when I, when I remember when Slash and I were tra trading demos and he, um, he sent that demo and I remember right out of the gate, I was like, Oh, this is, this is cool. You know, this is, this is, this is going to be really, really awesome. I just, something about it just kind of grabbed me from the get go. So yeah, with the, with the, as far as the, the narrative, as far as the lyric goes, I, I was during that period, you know, watching documentaries and, and reading a lot about, you know, kind of cults of personality and, and, and the idea of how, you know, kind of how poison ideas spread and how people, you know, can be manipulated. And, and it's just something I was really fascinated with. So that that's what that song kind of goes into, kind of goes into that whole, that whole um, subject matter. And, and um, yeah, so that's, that's, that's it in a nutshell. What made you guys want to get it out there first as that lead track? Um, that's a good question. I think for, for, for me, um, I thought it was going to be like the album opener. Like when I first sat back after the demo was finished and I was listening to it, I was like, I could really hear this kind of opening the record. So, but as far as being in the first single, I don't think I had, I certainly, I didn't know, you know, a lot of times you just don't know what people, you know, as artists, you tend to spend all your time focusing on a record and you don't know what people are going to gravitate towards. 
you have your personal favorites and this was definitely one of mine. So I was, was pleasantly surprised when we started playing the, the record for a handful of like tastemakers, people who knew and they're like, oh yeah, there's your, there's your single. And it's like, all right, cool. I can go, I can get behind that. Another track that really stands out to me is Spirit Love. So can you tell me about that one? Yeah, Spirit Love. So the first time I heard that, you know, you know, I was like, oh, I could picture, I could picture somebody like a snake charmer. You know, it had this very kind of mysterious thing. And I thought, do I write this song about someone calling a snake out of a basket? No, that's not going to work. People aren't going to relate to that. What's where's that going? But then I thought, because it has this mysterious element to it, I, I thought, well, it might be in what would what would what if this was written from the perspective of somebody who like thinks they're having an affair or a relationship with someone from the spirit realm, like a ghost, you know? And so I'd so then I was putting the lyric together and I thought, but what if at the very end of the song or at the end of the end of the story, they suddenly realize they've been, you know, essentially dead all, all along. And so, you know, so I thought that you always are looking for those little weird angles to keep yourself entertained as you're singing. <laughs> and so, so yeah, that's kind of the, that's kind of the story there. Was there any way that the pandemic did influence the writing or recording of the record? Yeah, because we couldn't get in the same room. Um, so we definitely leaned on technology and, and sending the demos back and forth. But, you know, to a degree, that's kind of how we've been doing it for years. So in, in, I feel like we've all been kind of practicing for, for the situation at hand. Um, but, yeah, you know, as far as, yeah, I think a fair amount of these songs from a musical standpoint, the, the genesis of them evolved on the road. You know, there are songs like Action Speak and, and uh, Say La Vie. I remember some of those songs, you know, Slash playing some of those riffs during sound checks and whatnot. But as far as, as, far as the way the album was recorded and, and doing the demo process and all that, yeah, it was definitely, we had a whole set of circumstances that we had to kind of dance around to, to, to get this to work that um, I think to some degree had a, a significant effect on on the overall vibe of the record um and i think that that's something that 10 years from now we'll look back and listen to this and and hear the little things like like a vocal that where i'm congested and like oh yeah that's right you know that's that because that's what was happening at the time it's all part of the story which is i think um the, part of the magic of making records you know to catch try and catch that's one thing i really appreciate about dave cobb is that he's a vibe guy, the, the gentleman who produced the album. And he understands it's about capturing that lightning in a bottle. It's about the, the magic of the moment. And I think he did a really good job doing that and not overthinking it. How would you describe the musical chemistry between Splash featuring Miles Kennedy and the Conspirators? Because you guys have been together a long time now and you guys just have great musical chemistry. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, you, there's definitely a kind of a, a vibe when the five of us get together and play. Um, and I think that having the benefit, having, having played hundreds, if not thousands, I guess at this point shows around the world and, and all this hit, I mean, Slash and I, it's crazy. I mean, we first started the first few tracks we ever made together was back in 2009. I mean, that's just like, where did the, where did the time go? You know um, it's, it's, it's pretty, um, pretty insane. Um, but I think that, the most important part of the equation, I think, is just that everybody gets along really well. You know, it's it's like um, it, it's a it's definitely a a good group of a good cast of characters. There's no there's not a bad apple in the bunch. I feel like everybody really is there for the the, the common cause, which is just to play great music, have a good time, and there's no ego or no you know. None of this. It does just has never existed in this camp. Not even a no inkling of it. So that's that's good. And I think that that having that fun is really important. And maybe, maybe that's part of what where people people gravitate towards when with these records. You can kind of like, I think that's some of that is palpable. You know, sonically, is you have five people who enjoy making music together. What is it like working with Flash? Because a lot of people look at him as this kind of obviously guitar icon and he seems very intimidating, but what is it like actually working with him? Yeah, it's, well, he is, he does have this air of this, he has this mystique, right? Um, and I, 
as the years have gone on, you get more and more of a, a glimpse into kind of who he is and how he operates. And the thing for me that I, I, I did start to recognize really early on, and it, and it continues to be a, a theme, is just how passionate he is about continuing to make music and play music. You know, he's at a point in his career where he doesn't have to do it. I mean, he can do whatever he wants. Um, and he's just, he's completely, just like, kind of like, I think that's why, why it works. I'm, I'm, I have that same drive and that same passion um, to, to create. And that's, that's our purpose. That's why we're on this planet. You know, for those of us who, who, who find that, um, find that passion, you, you get, it's like a drug, you get addicted to it, you know? So, so that's fun. That's, it's a lot of fun to see that and see that, um, that fire and see someone who still after all these years and after all that success, he's still just as passionate about it. I'm sure as he was when he started 30 some odd years ago. So that's amazing. How would you compare the situation of what it's like writing and recording a record with Slash and the crew versus what you do with Alter Bridge or your solo stuff? It's it's a different process, yeah, for sure. Um, with with Slash, you know, he'll he'll put together this music bed and then send it to me, and then I'll put my melody and my lyric to it and send it back. With Alter Bridge, um, Mark and I will write these individual, you know, things, and we'll oftentimes we'll put them together. Um, although on some of the newer stuff, we're, we're tending to go more of a de demo or we'll demo like the first few minutes of a song and then send it to each other. Well, you know, what do you think of this? And, um, whereas we used to just piece together, you know, do you have a course that goes with my verse or whatever, but because of the times we live in and we can't get in the same room as easily. And also we live 3000 miles apart from each other. We're starting to utilize a, a little different approach and, and, and it works and it's wonderful with the solo stuff. Yeah. It's, it's. I'm kind of left to my own devices in there. I, I basically go on my studio and I put these demos together where I, you know, I'll just kind of arrange the whole thing and then send it to Tim and Zia. And um, then we'll get together and do pre-production and, and, you know, make the record. But yeah, they're, they're all very different processes and uh, it's fun to have the three different elements to challenge myself each time I step into that realm for sure. When I've seen you live with Flash before, and I don't know if you still do this, but you perform like a few Guns N' Roses and Velvet Revolver tracks. I'm wondering what's your favorite GNR and or Velvet Revolver track to cover? My favorite Velvet Revolver track to cover is Fall to Pieces. Um, that's a great song. I, I just think that's a wonderful track. Um, Guns N' Roses, it's a tough one. Um, back in the we used to play it. I always have a you look. I think the um, it's just something. There's just something about Paradise City. Just to, you, from the I remember when we rehearsed that song um, the first time. You know, this was I don't know eleven years ago, or whatever whatever it was. And this is the very first time. And I remember standing there and hearing him kick into the beginning of that. And it was just the hairs on my arms were standing up. And I said, wow, this is just a really some would have told me back in 1987 after I purchased that record <laughs> that I would you know, I'd be uh, have the opportunity to stand here and hear this man play this five feet away. I would have thought you were crazy. So yeah, that that's a that's a that always has a special place. Um, it's a it's such a great track, and it and it uh, it's it's. It was, it was a lot of fun back when we used to play that one. Yeah. So what's new with Alter Bridge? Because people always want to know about that band too. Alter Bridge. Yeah. We're um, Mark and I are hard at work. Uh, I've got a bunch of, bunch of demos done and we're actually getting ready to send them to the, to the guys here in the next few days. Uh, I know Mark's working on, he's, he's going to start putting together some demos as well. And um, we'll hopefully get in the studio in a few months and uh, we'll see, we'll see what happens.